Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls Remastered with just the bow. Today we're going to be heading up to the top of the undead church over here, and we're doing so as a human, or at least a undead with our humanity back, so that we can hopefully have some PvP shenanigans or something crazy go on. Last time, uh, before I exited the game, it did say that I had some kind of Grave Lord Servant thing to defeat in order to return the world to normal. I don't know if that'll still be the case since I did exit the game and reload it. Oh my, that is a lot of summon signs. Can we actually take care of this archer here without, uh, without dealing with his swordsman friends? That would be quite nice. Yep, that did save a little bit of time. Oh, now he's uh, aware of me though. Oh, and here we have the bells uh, in the background once more. I mentioned those at the end of the last episode and I did explain that they are when uh, someone else goes and rings the bell at the top of the uh, undead church here. My gosh, there are just so many summon signs. Uh, this is just insane. Oh my gosh, I got so much damage from that hit there. My lord, there are just so many people here. Tiny and Tiny again and Bill Nye and Little Dark One and Cars 2 on DVD. <laughs> Some goofy names here, I gotta say. And Liu and Titacle and Yok and Giant Knight with a Hammer. That's what this guy's name would be. This is actually a, a little mini boss here. Not really a mini boss, I suppose, just like a stronger than average normal enemy, that, uh, especially for this point in the game. But they believe that you are capable of taking on this monstrosity at this point in the game, so here we are fighting him. Thankfully, a lot of his attacks are extremely slow and only usually deal with uh, melee range oppo opponents, so I really just have to like walk backwards and take a shot. Pretty easy to stagger him too it seems. This may be a, a mistake shot right here. No. As long as he's in an attack animation his shield doesn't actually seem to protect him which is nice for me. Okay we got a Titan Knight shard there so we only need one more or two more to get the next level for my short bow which is pretty nice. Uh, there is an enemy up there. Looks like some kind of dude with a mage staff or something. Firekeeper soul here that's useful for improving our uh, Estus Flask, and here we have something super handy. This is the way back down to the Undead Settlement. So remember that lift that they were talking about being broken? This is the one. And actually, let's see if we can do this here. If we do it just right, I can actually uh, access another kind of hidden area, uh, which leads us to this jump right here. So lift will go down there. We have some items up here, it seems, that we can grab, so see if I can remember how to do this, and we did it. Nice. Oh, and then I rolled off the edge. <laughs> Alright, well, that was kind of embarrassing, but up there are some loots that I will show you guys how to get to uh, when I decide to do it without falling off of the, uh, the edge there. So let's just run back over to the bonfire and probably turn in our firekeeper soul and then see if the NPCs have anything new to say since we've unlocked the lift based it, uh, up to the top of the end of church. But first, let's rest here. Oh, except we have uh, a skeleton that seems to have made it close enough to be a pain in my butt, but he's backing off now. There we go. All right, so we got that. Let's talk to him. Don't you ever think to forge your weapons? You'd better find a smith box soon, unless you enjoy swinging about with blunt instruments. <laughs> so he's making a reference to the repair box, I think. How did that silly sorcerer's apprentice end up? You know, the one always prattling on about Master Logan. He left for the undead Berg, but never came back. Serves him right. If even old Big Hat can't make it out there. What chance does he have? I hope he enjoys his new life as a hollow. This guy is such a Danny Downer. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. Alright, buddy. I'll leave you alone. Alright, let's see. Do we talk to you? Reinforce Estus Flask? Yes, please. There we go. Plus one. Don't have any Firekeeper Souls. So that's how we can 
make our Estus restore more. And as you can see, this uh, bonfire gave us 10 Estus. This is because this one's, I think, kindled a little bit. So you can see the flames a little bit higher than a normal bonfire. And it actually gives you more Estus, which is very nice, especially considering what I'm about to go get myself up to. And being able to heal more is always nice. Oh, I will teach you. Oh, nothing new from you. Just the same old miracles. Okay, let's go back up here and let's actually attempt to uh, get those items again. This time without falling. So you don't have to go up very far. There we go. Boop. And we'll jump over here. And actually, there's two sides to that lift. So you don't need to worry about getting locked out of one side or something like that. Oh, yeah, you can do it with the roll. You don't need to jump, which might be a little bit easier, but you have to make sure that you don't weigh too much. Because if your armor weighs too much, then you will most likely not have a long enough roll to fall off and land in the right spot. So over here is a nest, and if you curl up in that nest, which is just uh, prompted by pressing the A button in there, uh, and you wait long enough, you will actually be picked up by a uh, the bird from the start of the game that brought you from the end of the asylum, and they'll bring you back, which you should bring this key to so that you can open another door and get some special loot because there's the crow right there but we're not quite ready to go back there there's a pretty challenging opponent that I want to be ready to fight for when we go back there and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for that yes soul of a lost undead here and that's pretty much all for this little area here so let's go ahead and uh, rest because I took a little bit of damage at the bond or at the little fall damage there and I just don't want to have that going on when I'm going to deal with what I'm about to go deal with, so being extra cautious. Let's head over here, which is the right direction. Okay, we're going to take the lift back up, and then we're going to take a set of stairs going up to the very top of the Undead Church, which the bell is once again being rung at. Lots of people making it through the challenges that await us up there, but we'll see how we do wielding just the bow and arrow and a ponytail. <laughs> so yeah kind of excited but kind of nervous as well there's some enemies that I'm looking forward to fighting and some that I'm really terrified to fight the one I'm terrified to fight most of all probably is this guy I really don't like these these knights unless I can loop them with headshots but that was not the case and I'm scared that this guy is going to find some way to just wipe me out I really am scared of this guy, but he doesn't have too much health it looks like. I'm dealing okay amounts of damage. Oh, didn't want to roll like that. Oh, got him with the headshot as he jumped backwards and he's down. Okay, that was uh, not as bad as I first imagined it would be, so I'm pretty relieved right there about the turnout on that one. Now this, this might seem pretty innocent what's going on right here, but what is through this area is actually a complete nightmare. He can't hit me with his magic missiles, but I can hit him with arrows, so I am going to completely take absolute liberty of that that fact. Nice, Thousand Souls as well. Chance to put down some of these guys, which are, looks like they got a little blue glowing aura on them right now, and that's because they do in fact have some kind of buff going on. It's quite annoying. I don't like these opponents at all. Because they, they just kind of zerg you. Oh, see, here they come. Here they come all en masse. All like 30 of them. Just trying to whittle them down from a distance. But I'm doing okay since they kind of just walk at me in this corridor here. Just kind of keep flicking my targeting reticle as each one goes down. And, uh, bam. That's probably the easiest time I've ever had with that, that little room right there. This guy can drop items sometimes, which are pretty rare and pretty awesome, but he doesn't respawn, so you really only get like one chance per per game cycle, because there are new game pluses in this and stuff, so I don't think there's any other way to get him to come back. So let's head up here, and we have some more opponents to deal with, namely this knight right here. He's not too bad. Let's turn him into a little bit of a pincushion here. Get him when he's trying to Estus. And he just dropped his weapon or his shield the last second there, which was perfect for me. This went a lot better than I expected through this area. I thought this was going to be a complete nightmare. So I'm pretty happy about this uh, this episode so far. 
dash through here. We have another item hiding in this box. Anytime you see a dude's head sticking out of a barrel, good idea to knock that barrel over because there's a good chance there's a guy with some kind of item in there. Usually it's a good item too. I don't think it's usually nothing. We got a hidden door right here, which is right at the end of this hallway. So you come over here and you roll through that or smash it and you can come up here and you can actually free this golden knight right here. Imminent miscreant. Yes, he's still king of the party. Then I am in love. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without recourse. Without recourse indeed. So we can use the mystery key we picked up earlier to free this this guy right here. Thank you. Yes. Sincerely. I am Knight Lautrec of Calif. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. Nothing right now. Well, I suppose he's cooped up in a cell, but he could give us his armor, perhaps. Yes, very sorry. Your reward will have to wait. I've just been freed. Allow me some time. Ah, for sure, for sure. Anything else to say? I am free. Now, I can get back to work. <laughs> uh oh, that doesn't sound good. Uh, it looks like his arm is a little rusted there, which is kind of interesting. I wonder if I didn't really notice that in the original game, so I wonder if that has some importance. I am free. Other than his armor is old, because there's an interesting story about him. Just like I said, most characters in this game are very interesting and have very cool stories, so. If you're interested in lore and stuff like that, this game is very, very much on the deep lore. You just have to kind of dig for it, which is pretty cool. And it's one of my favorite parts about the game that took me a while to get into, but once I learned about it, I was just addicted. It's got Ember there, another human player looking to help people out. Climb this ladder, and I don't think... Sometimes you can get that Knight Lautrec to put his summon sign down around here somewhere, but I think he has to go back to the shrine first. And of course we have good old Knight Solar right here, but we don't summon anybody. Oh, looks like there's a... Oh, looks like I went in here by accident already, but there's a lot of people there willing to offer their help. So I'm actually going to pop an Estus just because this is actually not just a little room here. There's some mighty terrifying looking enemies up there. Well, actually, they just look like statues right now, except for that one looks a little more real. And now he starts moving. Very first time I came into this, I was just like, oh, am I going to have to fight a gargoyle seriously? And then that happened, and I was like, oh, this is just terrible. And I proceeded to give up on the game for about another six months on this guy. So this game took me about a year to actually get into. And uh, maybe you'll understand why this fight was so hard for me uh, after we get through part of it here. It's like most good things in Dark Souls. It isn't just over in one go. I don't really... Uh, I was kind of worried about that attack, but looks like it did hit me. And this guy does have like fire breath attacks and stuff too. So I'm trying to be careful. I can't seem to get staggers on him, which is nice. Oh, but look, there's a second health bar now. And looks like I have fire coming from both sides, and just like that, knocked from one fire into a swipe from him, and I'm down. So this guy, this double bell gargoyles, the two from up there, they took me a long, long, long time to figure out how to deal with. In fact, they're the ones that, uh, that um, caused me to have to go back to that red dragon and fight him for uh, uh, what you call it for the the sword that you can get from him in order to be a little bit stronger in this game that's what I had to do and that was the only way even after more attempts after that and summoning NPCs to help me even after all of that I still had trouble and finally when I got it down it was like I don't even think I felt joy I think I just felt relief <laughs> that it was over and then the rest of the game proceeded to be even more difficult, so... Lesson got learned on that one. I'm really not sure how I actually came to like this game. <laughs> but yeah, somehow I did. As you can see, there's no wizard there, but there are still all of these... Nasty little dudes... That love to just swing at you wildly. We're just gonna run past all of them. 
And uh, we're not going to move to the other bonfire as a respawn location with the blacksmith because the one that we come from down there gives us a whole bunch of uh, Estus. So I'd much rather have, you know, plus four Estus even if I have to use one taking damage to get here. And you don't get a nice little intro uh, the second time that these guys are fought, they just jump right on you. So I'll grab that just so I don't lose my humanity, because that's definitely important to me. And just try and watch out for all his different moves, learn the ones I can learn, and try some new tactics like unlocking the camera. Oh, I didn't think that was actually going to hit me. I'm just going to heal up, because as you saw last time, it doesn't take much for me to just be completely wiped out by these guys. That's one thing I learned really quickly about this game, is that uh, Dark Souls loves to take full advantage of the model's size. So when something looks like... Like, if he just swung his weapon right now, it like, doesn't look like it's super long, but because of the way they animate the enemies in this game, uh, they tend to use the full model. So he'll stretch his legs, and then stretch his uh, torso and stretch his arms to the maximum range to try and bonk you really good. Okay, now we got both of them. So now the game is mostly just about dodging and not dying. And uh, also taking more hits than you're supposed to. Okay, I'm just actually going to run here. Get my goofy little, little charge. Try and get a shot in. Oh, that might not have been worth it. I do have uh, a bunch of Estus, so... As long as I'm in a situation where I won't just get gibbed, I don't mind. Okay, we're getting them kind of low. Alright, let's run over here. Do some rolling to try and avoid whatever kind of shenanigans might be coming my way. Just get a shot in here if I can. Gotta be careful, because if I, if I stop running and I pull the arrow back, it seems to kind of do a, a different kind of shot a little bit, where I, I do like a stop, but then I, ooh, ooh this isn't good, this is really bad in fact. Oh yeah, I'm toast. Um, wow, I just got cooked. But if you're running and then you stop and like try to turn around and do a shot without just like stopping and turning around, it seems to do a little bit of a kind of a sliding stop animation and then turn around to shoot. So I think that's something I have to be aware of. And uh, yeah, just getting myself in bad positions. Like Dark Souls 3 feels a little bit more of like an action reaction, knowing your movement kind of game more reliant on your skill in the moment but Dark Souls 1 feels a little bit more like a chess match to me in terms of like make sure that you make the right move compared to what the boss is doing or your opponent and you know really take advantage of trying to bait and move each other in different ways because one thing I try and look at whenever I'm defeated in a situation of a video game regardless of if it's Dark Souls or or uh, you know, Paper Mario or something like that. It's just like uh, the decisions you make up to the moment that you're defeated can often reveal the truth of why you were defeated. So rather than like looking into the moment and saying like, oh, you know, I was defeated because uh, such and such got a critical strike or something like that that was lucky, or or um, you know, if I'd only done this one small thing differently, a battle would have turned out wildly different. It's like, well, what about a few steps up to there? Could you have used a more optimal strategy to avoid ending up in a situation like that? That's just uh, one of the things I try and look at, especially with a game like this, because like, I probably shouldn't just move towards the edge and been so aggressive with my uh, arrows getting cornered like that. I probably should have seen that moment coming. That's probably what I should have done. So I'm just going to try and use more than one roll to stay a solid distance away from this guy. I want to make sure I'm on this side of the map when the... Uh, when the other one spawns, he's a weirdly far distance away from me. And that almost got me, so that was a little scary. And one thing to try and do, I think, is to unlock the camera to run away from these guys. Because, like I said, I'm still trying to get over my used to Dark Souls 3 feels. Because uh, in that game, the locking on is just really keeps your camera centered on a guy. But you can freely do whatever you want after that. You can run around, dodge in any direction, so long as your controller is pointed in the right way. I definitely need to level up my HP a bit as well. So right now I'm gonna definitely run away. This guy's breathing a lot of... Fo oh, almost lost my lock there. So I did that little uh, stop and dash or whatever again. 
Try to save up some stamina, try and get a couple shots in here. Not too many though, I don't want to jeopardize my situation. Okay, we're in that spot again where I need to consider uh, avoiding all their stuff. Definitely prefer to try and kill the one that's shooting flames, but they're both shooting flames. So, oh, that was bad. That was bad decision making by me right there. This guy's dashing. Yep, I'm gonna try and really get out of the way of everything here. Alright, so this guy's dashing. If, if they had stopped dashing and just shoot more fire, that would be wonderful. Alright, let's try and get both shooting flames here. Seems like I can kind of take advantage of that for the moment, but I should still be extremely careful. I might be able to get one shot here. That guy's spewing more fire, this guy's going for a jab. I'm just going to go and gamble on getting that shot there. Oh, shoot. I don't know what's going on with this guy. Oh, and he actually got me there because I was right coming out of a roll. Dang it. Well, I didn't think this fight was going to take this long, but... It's just, like I said, getting back into the flow of the game and uh, learning all the fights all over again. I mean, I still remember the fights, I suppose, but learning them from the bowl and the angles is definitely different. I almost wonder if I should take the, the bottom armor off, too, but no, I feel like my role is pretty good. I think I'm just used to uh, the other game still too, still too much, and I'm trying to force this game to feel the same way and get away with a lot of things that... I would get away with in that game. So that's uh that's what I'm going for. Is to change up my strategy now and do a little bit more feel the Dark Souls, feel the chess match, feel the taking my time with things, making the correct moves rather than relying on just getting through the the moment. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's that's what's going through my head. I try and change it up, analyze it figure it out. We'll see. We'll see if it works. Could just be a whole bunch of nonsense, but I do have to be careful because I only have 168 arrows left, which is more than enough to kill them, but not if I keep dying. I'm feeling pretty good about this last attempt here. Gotta remember my Estus will heal me to full, but I need a little bit longer than I expect to use it. Let's see, avoid that. Just get arrow in on him here. Nope, totally missed. Let's do it again. Got a couple in on him. Avoid that. I don't think there's any follow up to that one. Stagger is a free arrow. Oh, he has much more range on that than I expected. Might be able to avoid whatever he's doing here. Yep. Yeah. Still scary though. That wasn't too bad. I'm trying to watch him this time. I remember that dodging in Dark Souls 1 is a little bit more timing. And the directional thing is throwing me off a little bit. Alright, that's actually not too bad. As long as he doesn't do anything too crazy here. I'm just going to have to go for the heal anyways. I'll take the hit. That guy, I think, always goes for a fire breath attack first. I am going to heal. Because I do have a lot of Estus. And I don't want to get absolutely destroyed by something silly. Alright, let's uh, shoot this guy with an arrow a couple times. Still trying to be a little bit extra careful. Dodge all these flames. If you don't run out of stamina, then I think you can actually still um, still run even if you only have a little bit of stamina. But if you run yourself completely out of stamina, then you won't be able to run. I need to get myself out of this corner. It's going to be a really bad day if I allow myself to stay in there. And that guy's just doing those kind of attacks. So I can... Just throw more heat their way. Get one more shot in on this guy. Nice. Working them down both pretty nicely. I need to be very careful because I'm stuck in a corner again. Thankfully that guy went for a fire breath. They both did, in fact. Oh, that was a pretty bad time to stop and go for that. That's okay. Just try and pour some more. That guy's going for a s s flying swoop. I couldn't think of what kind of swoop to call it. Alright, here we go. We got this guy again. So let's be very careful and not die to some kind of combo. Ah, oh, we got the Gargoyle Helm this time. It's one of the items you can get for fighting this guy. If you knock this guy's tail off, you'll actually get an axe guaranteed. Uh, but I don't really want to work on that using just the bow. <laughs> That's a little cha more challenging than I'm willing to do. 
but we got the Gargoyle's Halberd anyway, which is still an awesome item. I won't be using it, but definitely cool to have. We got the Twin Humanities, which is nice, and 10,000 souls. And now we get to climb this big ladder here. Those 10,000 souls are really nice. I'm definitely going to grab a bunch of arrows and probably upgrade my health and probably my stamina a little bit too. Get those up to both about 15 or so. And it's going to be probably where I'll keep them a little while. I keep working on my dexterity to get more damage. See if I can't buy another Titanite Shard or two, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm dreaming too big for my small amount of souls here. But let's pull a lever. See if you recognize the sound. So we probably rang our bell and it sounded in a whole bunch of other players' games now. Everybody's hearing this bell ring like crazy. That's one of the cool parts is it just echoes across all worlds. I don't know if it'll be completely quiet for us now though. It might keep ringing. Maybe not though. I don't know, well we'll see. Yep, climb all the way down here. Nice little climb down animation. <laughs> Dark Souls 3 they added ways to speed this up, but nothing wrong with it. Everybody's gotta make the journey. And we have a new friend. Greetings. I am Oswald of Karina, the Park. And I'll ask a friend. For these Come as I to confess, it is he. For indeed, all sin is my name. We can learn his gesture. Well, what is it? And we can not talk to him, but basically he allows us to indict other players that have invaded us, check a list of indicted players, or uh, abandon our covenant. And request absolution from sins. Oh, I missed one of his things there. Sorry about that. But basically, uh, sinning involves if you attack an NPC so that they are hostile, or you do something terrible to another player. Wow. That's kind of terrifying. Shooting gallery? Shooting gallery. So they, okay, they give enough souls for the arrow that they're worth, but not by much. I already missed once, so I'm already down enough arrows to be a little bit salty about it. Oh, that's two arrows I've missed. That's a whole one of these guys. There we go. One of them has an item, so might be worth it even more. Might get 100 souls for that. <laughs> okay, well, that's that. So let's, uh, let's see. What are we, we going to do here? Let's use a homeward bone. Head back down to the shrine bonfire. And uh, we'll do some leveling up, and maybe we'll go do some other stuff. Let's see. That's what I would do, is get those both to 15. And I can afford to do that right now. So I'm tempted to do that. I can save the rest of my souls for Titanite Shards. So yeah, let's do that. Gives me a nice little health and stamina boost there. Not a ton, but enough to uh, get me going a little bit better survive a little bit more damage and make better use of my Estus actually because that's one of the cool things about Estus is um, it heals more health every time you upgrade it so you might as well level up your health so that you can get the maximum benefit so let's head back up the lift here I forgot to talk to the knight sitting behind beside the bonfire since we have now rang one of the bells of awakening I thought he might have something interesting to say but we'll just talk to him next time we go there um, unfortunately for a lot of the NPCs in this game we won't be able to see their full stories because we won't be summoning certain characters at certain points in the game but I will definitely talk to everybody see I see as often as I can I'm still missing some treasure back there uh, but I'll come back a little later <laughs> I just not feeling dealing with the things I have to get to that treasure right now so we're going to go do this, and yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty pretty fun episode. We got the gargoyles down. Um, I hope to do more, but that fight proved to be a little bit more than I was expecting. And that's probably going to be the case with most of this game. Let's see, we need to purchase uh, two Titan H shards, please, sir. And we need to reinforce my short bow to a plus two. Nice. Now we need... Oh, I can do it again? 
I guess it just needed one for plus two. Nice, we can get all the way to plus three. Now we need two Titan A shards to get to plus four. I forgot how it works in this game. It's a little bit more intuitive, a little bit more resource heavy. Uh, 43 damage will be the next upgrade. Well, you know what? I don't want this episode to just be us fighting the gargoyles, so let's fight this other giant stone thingy. I think I can defeat him here. Let's see if we can just fight him like this. Oh, I got hit with the lightning. Oh, no, I do not want to do that. Whoop. I mean, I guess this is probably the best way to fight this guy. It's just, uh... Keep shooting arrows at him, keep shooting lightning at him. Because you can go down there and get him to jump around and use his weapon to fight you. But it's a little uh, a little more scary for me to do that than to just fight him like this. But I feel like I should probably switch to like large arrows, maybe? Those might deal a bit more damage to him. Oh yeah, 40 is a lot more damage. Oh, that was a headshot. Oh, kind of a headshot, I suppose, for what you might consider where his head was located. Uh, but this is what you would call a titanite demon. Uh, so I, th I don't know if he's like made out of titanite or like what? Like maybe someone at some point had created statues that were made out of titanite and when something went bad they became like this or maybe someone inscribed whatever's on their, their where their neck plate would be or their neck would be I suppose. I don't know. I really don't know what's up with these demons. They seem to be able to harness lightning, which is interesting. I think that's worth noting. Oh, I don't have any more large arrows left. So let's switch back to the old standard arrows and continue the onslaught. Standard arrows are expensive, man. 50, 50 souls per. Gonna have to get pretty good at farming some souls with the bow in order to make that a uh, thing I can keep a lot of on hand. Sure, we'll figure it out eventually, though. Definitely don't want to get tagged by any of these lightnings, though. Oh, got a nice stagger there, so we can get like four, four free shots in or so. Keep that stagger meter going. Get it worked up again. This extra stamina is pretty nice, being able to roll and shoot more often. Kind of makes up for not being able to do any of the like quick rolls or uh, shoot while moving stuff from Dark Souls 3. There we go. Got the Titanite Demon down. 2,000 more souls. Always happy to see that. And a di Demon Titanite, which I think is used to upgrade certain special weapons. Let's see someone else here. Getting taken out. Ugh, poor guy. Sometimes life's just too tough. Anyways, that's uh, all for now from this Dark Souls playthrough. Actually, you know what? No, that's not all. We can do this right now. We get two of these, reinforced weapon, bam, plus four. Now we need three titanite shards, all right. <laughs> I don't think I have enough to do that yet. Actually, you know what? You know what, are we gonna just go for it today? I think we're just gonna go for it today. Why not? Can we, if we use all of these, can we afford to do it? Might as well do it all at the end of this episode. Here, get powered up for next time. That's 800, that's enough for one. Is this gonna be 800 or is this gonna be like 600? Oh, that's a thousand. Okay, well that's 2400 is what we need for three. So let's uh, purchase item three, sir. Thank you very much. Now that we have enough souls to do it. Yeah, all right. Getting up to plus four right away. Now we need, uh, I don't think we can even do the next one until I get the next one, what is it, modify? No, I don't even think I can do that yet. Nope, I can't upgrade to the next level until we get uh, another thing later on. So this is as good as it's going to get for our bow for right now. We do 157 damage with the right-handed weapon. Uh, I think it'll still be the same. Yeah, 157. So hopefully that's enough to take on a bunch of the game until we can find a new bow and get that upgraded. But next time I'll find some way to farm some more souls, get some more arrows. If not, we'll just head forward and deal with what we got. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.